Hello everyone and welcome back to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Welcome along. Uh, today we're going to do a quick kiln glaze fire opening. Um, yeah, I've been really, really busy in the studio over the last couple of weeks. I've had a husband with flu, a dog who needed an, an unexpected operation. Um, the hydrangea head videos have gone out and it's just gone completely mad. Um, so today we're going to have a nice calm glaze kiln fire opening. So let's get this lid up and we'll see what we've got in here. Okay, lovely. I did, well, you know, I, you know I've got to say, I did have just the tiniest of sneaky peeks. Uh, this kiln is now cold. It was cold uh, yesterday, but I just didn't have time to do the filming. Uh, so first out, lovely, really pretty actually, um, and for Nat at Mud Magic, who I know will be watching, another blue rutile. So um, this is Kathy's bowl. Uh, when she made it, she put some fluted texture on it, just using a modelling tool to put some sort of stripes on it. And when she did it, I thought, I'm not sure that blue rutile is going to show up that texture. But actually it does. Isn't that pretty? So that's just a little fluted bowl, handmade, um, so hand built, not made on the wheel, and um, just with a little bit of fluted texture. And that is Amico's Blue Rutile on its own, three good coats. Lovely. And the back is even nicer in many ways. There are just a couple of very tiny pinholes, hardly anything really. Um, but really, really pretty. That is such a good glaze. And you'll know it's one of my top 10 glazes. Uh, if you haven't seen the my top 10 glazes, I'll stick a link up for you. Um, it's a good one to watch if you're a beginner. Kind of get a feel of what the glazes are and what goes in combination with what. So yeah, that's a lovely bowl. Isn't that pretty? She'll be really pleased with that. And Kathy's coming in tomorrow, which is why I am doing the filming today because I want her to be able to see her things. She's got another bowl a bit further down. Um, sorry, I'm a bit husky. <clears throat> I've, I've sort of kept away from my husband as much as possible because as I say, he's had nasty, nasty flu. Um, but I think I'm catching the tail end of a cold. So um, excuse the husky, sexy voice. Right, next out. Now, you'll know that Leslie's been working on her animal totem. She's and made these tree sections to use as spaces between the animals. Um, so that was, I thought that was a really good idea. There's just a, there's a, a homemade cookie just stuck on the back of that one, which I'll just need to tap off. Um, but they're just tubes. So they're going to go on the stem of the totem between the animals. Uh, this is the first of them. So the glaze on here, she's put this lovely texture, which I hope the camera's picking up when she made it with this sort of lovely texture of bark on here um, and on these sort of sections up the sides. Um, so the main glaze is uh, Mako's Winter Wood, which is perfect because it almost makes it look like a silver birch, really pretty. And then she's used Cosmic Tea Dust in the uh, dead trunk ends with a little bit of Mako's um, Aurora green just on the on this little green section here just to give it a little bit of difference actually that's really pretty and it's going to look lovely as a spacer between her her wild animal totem so that's the first of those the tallest of those which actually I fired um, on its side because it was just too tall to pack into the kiln uh, so it did go on its side that one right I'm going to get this shelf out and we'll see what's further down Right, okay, first things first. This is the third and last of Penny's uh, poppy heads. Um, she had two that came out of the previous kiln firing. Lovely, look at that. Isn't that nice? Really pretty. Um, so she's hand built this, two pinch pots joined together um, with a, a top on. I've got a bisque stamp that I've made with this daisy design on. Uh, and that is Amico's Weeping Plum really shows up all that lovely texture that she's put on there so that's really nice penny lovely so the three of hers are now done so i can let her know she can come and pick those up next 
Uh, again, uh, Helen, one of my new students, is, is playing with glazes. Um, and this, <laughs> I love it, is Amico's Ancient Copper. Isn't that a lovely glaze? I hope that the camera is picking up the, it's almost rusty um, and it's such a good surface. It's really lovely. It does um, move a little bit. There's just a drip there. Um, so I've had this on a cookie just to, just in case that it dripped. And again, there is a video on the channel of making your own cookies. So check out that one. Uh, so yeah, that's Amico's Ancient Copper Three Coats. Lovely, very nice. And that again is just a little pinch bowl for her to just test out some glazes. Lovely. Uh, this is Kathy's. This is really rather lovely. If I can just pick it up carefully. Yeah, okay. Interesting. So this again is a handmade bowl. So she's rolled out a slab, put her texture on the slab from a sprig that we have in the studio. Um, and then she's put Amico's smoke uh, onto the texture and then wiped it back. And that actually has come out really lovely because you can see all that beautiful texture on there. Um, so that's Amico smoke wipe back with mixing clear over the top. Now on the back, she's used, hmm, sheer blue, I think it's called. I'll check that. If it's different, I'll put it on the screen. Um, and I have to say it has rather badly pinholed on the back. If you can see that, this whole section here is rather nasty. And funnily enough, that's probably the bit that was in the center of the kiln rather than the bit that was close to the elements. But beautiful dish, isn't that lovely? Really nice, she's gonna be really pleased with that one. It's gorgeous. Right, next shelf, let's see what's underneath. Right, okay, beautiful things in the bottom of here, I can already see. Uh, so these are more of Leslie's spacers in the same colourway. So uh, Mako's Winterwood with a little bit of Aurora Green. Um, and that shows up the texture really nicely. So those are lovely. Um, when we actually get to putting the totem together, I'll do a little piece so that you can see it finished. It's going to be pretty spectacular. Oh, that one's really nice. Look at that. Really pretty. Lovely. I think that's worked really well with that cosmic tea dust just in the sort of the rotten section of the tree. Yeah, lovely, really like that. Those are good, Leslie, very good. As usual, as usual. So there's another one. Oh, I think we've got five, because I think there's six, six animals all told. Right, and again, same again. Very pretty. Isn't that winter wood good on there? Lovely, very lifelike, very, very nice. I'm sure Leslie will be pleased with those. Right, next, this is Helen's. Hello, pretty. So this is uh, Helen's first slabbed piece with me. Um, so she's rolled a slab, used the um, textured sprigs that I have upstairs that I've made myself to give herself an overall design. Um, and then there are just little feet. It always ma almost makes it look sort of Japanese. I think it's lovely, a lovely design. Um, and then she's used Amico's Mulberry wiped back. So Mulberry put over and then wiped back and just left in the texture with a Weeping Plum over the top. Really pretty. She's gonna be delighted with that. Really nice, isn't that, hasn't that come out well? And really lovely little dish. Really pretty, great. Lovely, like that. Right, next, talking about uh, Leslie's little creatures. This is the last of them. So this is the last of the creatures. So the one that's going to go on the top of the pole. And it's, oh, it's adorable. It's a little dormouse. So the little dormouse goes into his nest and he's going to sit this way up on the top of the pole. So the pole's gonna go through this hole here and up into the dormouse. Look at him with his tail over his head. Isn't he cute? That's cute. That's very cute. Now, can I remember the glaze? Hmm, I'm not sure that I can. I might have to have a think about that and put it up on the screen. Um, yeah, really nice. 
I think they think it's got ancient jasper on it. Pretty sure it's got ancient jasper. Um, I'll need to check what the other glaze was on there. But that's the nest, and that's the little little mouse in his nest, fast asleep. Isn't that sweet? Lovely. So yes, that's the top of the uh, totem. So as I say, when we come to put it together, we'll uh, we'll do a little video just so that you can see it all stacked up. Uh, right, there's a half shaft, so I'll just get that one out. So this is the third of Jane's leaves. You'll have seen these in the last kiln opening again. Um, ancient copper, Amoco's ancient copper again. Um, that's on a stilt that I'm going to have to get off because it's slightly run onto the stilt. Can you see that? Um, but yeah, I mean, it's nice. It is nice to glaze things in the round, especially as these are going to hang by by a cord from these holes. Um, but it does mean that I have a dremeling issue with getting them off when they're done. So that's Amoco's ancient copper again. Pretty, very pretty. Next out of the bottom of here are again two of two of Helen's little practice dishes. Uh, so this is um, uh, no Mako sea salt with Mako raspberry mist over the top, and I had an issue with um, Mako sea salt where the the pot that I was using uh, was a completely different colour to the pot that they then sent me, and I'll st I did take a picture of it at the time because it's so different. Um, so actually, what is the old pot so the bit that was the one that was darker that I've been using for some time and had used on my set of plates and it's got much more in the way of that sort of green flecking in it than the new one um, despite the fact that Mako say that it's been used and tested to the same um, consistency and outcome etc it clearly is not quite the same um, so, I mean, it's rather annoying when you're in the middle of making a set of something for a glaze to, tra to change so dramatically. Um, but those are quite pretty. She's just playing, just playing with how things come out. So that's um, the old sea salt with raspberry mist and the new sea salt with raspberry mist. The raspberry mist comes out nice and pink. Um, but other than that, hmm, a bit disappointed with Mako in that... Uh, in that way. Right, the last thing to come out of here is um, one of Janet's pieces. I'm just going to lift it out really carefully because she's uh, she's done her usual stick it on with glaze and it's quite a big piece so I don't want to pick it up by the top. Okay, so Janet has made a, a little sort of village scene Christmas for Christmas. So this is the first of the pieces with a house and a tree um, and you can see on the shelf behind me these are the other two in the set, so they join together. Um, but Janet likes to um, stick things on with glaze, which is fine if they're small, but I wouldn't trust picking this up by the, um, by the bits on the top because I just don't think that it would be safe to do so. Um, but it's a beautiful thing, and as usual with Janet's pieces, very well made. Um, she makes her things to a real professional level. So that one's really pretty and it's got space for um, the little um, fairy lights to go inside so that it's going to be lit up from the inside. So that's the first of those pieces. Very nice, isn't it? Um, that would be Amoco Snow. Amoco Snow. That looks like wasabi. Um, this is deep fire brick on the top. Obsidian on the windows. Uh, I'm not sure what the grey is. Because I wasn't with her when she did it, but it's rather nice, isn't it? Very pretty. So that's so, all you've got in the kiln today. I've got lots of shout outs this week, so I'm going to stick my glasses on and we'll go through them. So first of all, I'd like to thank Sharon Peak, um, <laughs> who very kindly sent me this in the post. I mean, how sweet. Really lovely to get um, to get a little parcel from a viewer. So that was really sweet of you to do that, Sharon. So we were talking about using the talcum powder or cornstarch um, to, to put on things to stop them sticking so if you're using fairly soft clay um, so she sent me this little pot and this little brush this is a makeup blusher a blusher brush but it's nice because it's short um, and then you can just have your cornstarch in there 
on the table in the studio. So thank you, Sharon, for sending me those. I think that's really kind of you, and I'm sure that myself and the students will benefit from using those. So thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure exactly where you are. I know you're in America, um, but I can't... Um... Oh, no, you do tell me. It's You're in South Carolina. So thank you, Sharon. Very kind of you to do that. Right, other shout-outs. Oh, a whole stack. Look at these. Right, glasses needed, obviously. So, first of all, um, I had uh, a question from a viewer, from Jessica, saying, do I do any virtual classes or do I film my classes? Um, she's been taking pottery since the autumn and loves it. Her teacher is very funny and nice, but not as great a teacher, and I'd love to have recorded lessons. Well, now, um, Jessica is in... Needham in Massachusetts. Jessica, the, the YouTube tutorials that are on the channel are basically free lessons for beginners um, and indeed clay people of any level of ability. Um, and I don't do charged for um, web lessons, but you are able, if you so wish to, make a contribution via the super thanks button. Uh, if you've enjoyed uh, following along with the tutorial, and uh, feel that you wanted to just sort of bung me a couple of quid for, for the time and the uh, expertise that it takes to do it. So in answer to your question, I have looked at maybe following down the um, going to one of the companies like Domestica, for instance, and starting to sort of sell my, my tutorials via that way. But actually the whole vibe for me um, with the YouTube videoing is that people get to see a real potter in a real situation and follow along and get to know them and get to know their little foibles and all their little catchphrases and all the other things that go on. And I, as a potter, I follow lots of people. You'll know that I have my pottery sister, soulmate, uh, Monique in Bonaire at uh, New Coo Pottery. And I also watch Vaughan Smith, who's in Nova Scotia. So there are people around the world that are doing this and giving up their time and using their knowledge of clay to pass it on to others. So that's what I like to do. I like to be able to share my knowledge and my expertise with people for free. But if you felt that you wanted to make a donation, the super thanks button is there for that particular purpose. Right, so that's you, Jessica. Thank you very much for your note. I love it. I loved this one. This is from Denise Berger-Robertson, and she's in Mossvale in Australia. So she's right over the other side of the world, and, and it's not cold where she is at the moment. It'll be summer. Followed along with the rhubarb leaf bird bath project, and again, I'll stick a... I'll stick, a, I'll stick a little note up on the end of that particular video. It's a good one. It's I think it's three parts again. Um, and she's made her own version. Aren't they lovely? Look at the little birds on there. They're so sweet. So well done, Denise. I think that's really lovely. And it's so nice for me, um, having done the tutorial, to get you know your version sent through on the, uh, on the website. And if you want to send me any pictures of your work from following along with my tutorials, then my website address is in the description box below. Right, and on that vein, there's another one who bought the Wonky Pot template. This is from Sandy Fulbrook, who's in Middleborough in, uh, in the UK. One has been made in terracotta and one in earthenware. Right, so this is the terracotta one, made a lovely Wonky Pot, beautiful texture on there, lovely glaze, lovely feet. And then this one is the earthenware one, pretty. Actually, Sandy, if you're watching, you could drop in the comments below what your glaze combinations were on those. Really, really pretty. Lovely. And again, as I say, you know, she bought the Wonky Pot template, thank you very much, from the Etsy shop and uh, made her own versions and then sent me a picture. So I really appreciate it. That's lovely. Thank you, Sandy. Um, now, I had a little note. I'm a member of the Southern Ceramics Group. Um, which is a group of potters along the south coast of England. And uh, Pat Kerr sent me a little note to say, Dear Sarah, I am an old school potter of 60 years and have just found your YouTubes. You are inspirational. I wish my old body had more energy. Keep up your good work with love from Pat. So thank you, Pat. It means a lot to have 
um, somebody with far more experience than me in the potting world commenting and sending me a little note to say uh, that you find my work inspirational. So thank you for taking the time to do that. That's lovely. And the last one today, and again, this is somebody who's bought the Wonky Pot template. And um, this is Anka Sandermeyer's. I don't know where you are, Anka, but um, look at these. These are lovely, beautifully, highly coloured, beautiful texture. Love the feet. Really, really nice. And then this one looks like um, she's had a go at monoprinting. I think this looks like it's got a monoprinted surface on it. So lovely. Really like those. Really beautiful. So thank you for sending me those. Um, I actually... <laughs> worth mentioning those little chickens aren't they cute lovely really nice so thank you Anka for sending me those as I say it's just really nice um, when people have watched the tutorials that they send me a photo of their own version so thank you for those right you'll see behind me on the shelf that the um, hydrangea heads are drying so here they are not not bisque fired yet um, so I'm hoping to get these bisque fired and do the third in the series of the hydrangea head make um, over the next couple of weeks so watch out for that one it's caused a stir um, I'm really grateful to everybody that's bought a kit so if you if you don't know what I'm talking about I've done the um, preparation and equipment needed video to make your own porcelain hydrangea heads and also the actual make video has now gone out um, and these are now waiting for bisque firing and then I'll do the glazing and using the glass frit. And in the first video, um, I show you the kit that's available via my Etsy shop to buy the cutters and the glass and the template. So it's all in a pack, um, which will make it really easy for you if you want to follow along with me in making your own beautiful porcelain hydrangea heads. So that's all from me today. I'm pleased to say that the husband of the flu is getting better. He still has a rather nasty cough. And my little dog, my little sissy, um, had um, an operation on her bladder, which was full of bladder stones, poor baby. So she's now a week post-surgery and again, improving, recovering. Uh, but it's been a bit of a week. So um, we're trying to chill out with clay to just calm the stress levels. Um, so I hope to see you all on the next one. Take care of yourselves, everybody. And I'll see you then. Bye for now.